is a privilege and one that I did not expect to have and one that I'm delighted to have uh, to welcome to the Royal Albert Hall tonight and to listen for the next 50 minutes uh, to the initial presentation from Mr. Ahmed Didat. Thank you, sir. I scream, go on, go on, look, I love you, brother, I love you, I love you, I love you, we love you, we love you. Thank you. Awuzu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim, bismillahi r-rahmani r-rahim, bal. نكزف بالحق إلى الباطل فيدمغه فاذا هو ذاهب ولكم الويل مما تصفون صدق الله صدق الله مولانا العزيز مستر تشيرمان ريسبكتد سبيكر اين ماي ديير برذرز اند سيسترز ذا سبجكت از جيسس جاد can very easily be solved by asking a counter question. Did Jesus claim to be God? Did he say I am God? Did he say worship me? And believe me, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, there is not a single unequivocal statement in any of the 66 books of the Bible or the 73 of, 73 of the Roman Catholics where Jesus says I am God or where he says worship me. There isn't. I would have been very happy to hear Jesus, the, from the lips of Jesus, this simple, straightforward, explicit statement. I am God or worship me. Because I as a Muslim and we Muslims as a whole we believe that Jesus Christ was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe in his miraculous birth. We believe that he was the Messiah. And we believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission. And he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. This is really the only point of real difference between the Muslim and the Christian is the divinity of Christ. And for that, I say that our brother has not adduced a single statement from the lips of Jesus saying, I am God or worship me. While he walked this earth, he never made such a statement. Of course, our brother has a chance, my brother Shorosh, of coming back and perhaps he might be able to point out to me in case he had overlooked it. The nearest he came to that was a quotation from the book of Revelation where it is supposed to be the words of Jesus where he says, I am Alpha and Omega, meaning I am the first and the last. Now this book of Revelation was a dream. Was a dream in which John, in the dream, he saw a vision in which he saw animals with eyes inside and eyes outside and horns with eyes on it. All this is a man, if he eats too much, he gets that type of experiences. <laughs> but while Jesus walked this earth, we will analyze what he actually said and what he did. Now the idea of the Holy Trinity, in which the Christian, the bulk of Christendom, including the Anglican Church, the Roman Catholics, the Presbyterians, the Lutherans, the Methodists, almost as a whole, they believe in this thing called the Holy Trinity. In the Christian Catechism of the churches, they say, I'm quoting that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But they are not three gods, but one God. This is the Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty, and the Holy Ghost is Almighty. But they are not three Almighty, but one Almighty. It, it continues. I'm quoting the Catechism. This is the Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person. But they are not three person, but one person. I am asking, what language is that? Is that English? It sounds English, 
but this is not English person 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 but not three person but one person I said what language is that what is a person in your language you English people tell me you Americanized Englishman tell me what is a person in your language if you and your two other brothers are identical triplets we can't make out the difference between the three of you you are all identical if one of you commit murder I am asking can we hang the other you say no I said why not you all look alike so he tells me no he's a different person what makes him a different person it is his personality if the personality is different he's different and when you say the Christian says in the name of the father and the son and the Holy Ghost I say you have three distinct mental pictures in your mind when you say father you don't think of the son when you say the son you don't think of the Holy Ghost are you there yeah. and these three pictures you can never superimpose and create one there'll ever be three in your mind unless the mind is diseased you say these three I see as one the three will ever remain three now as far as the Muslim is concerned believing that any human being any human being is God or is equating with God it is an act of treason against God whether it's a Hindu idea of a God incarnate or whether it is a Christian idea of a God incarnate God becoming a man the Holy Quran says لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ said whosoever says that Jesus Christ the son of Mary is God they are making kufr it's an act of blasphemy this is treason against God وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحِ but Christ said يَا بَنِي إِسْرَعِيلِ أُوْشُرُونَ فِي إِسْرَعِيلِ لَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ وَشِبْ اللَّهِ رَبِّي وَرَبُّكُمْ who is my Lord and your Lord إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ whoever will associate anyone with Allah فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ لِلْجَنَّةِ Allah will make Jannah haram for them heaven will be forbidden for them وَمَا وَهْنَارِ and the fire of hell will be the dwelling place وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِنَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ and for the wrongdoers there will be no one to help and Jesus Christ he is speaking about the Father in heaven he is your Father and my Father again and again in the Gospel of St. Matthew if you start taking stock from chapter 1 verse 1 you will come across this phrase your father thy father your father thy father 13 times before the first time he says my father it's an amazing situation that 13 times the man is telling you that God Almighty is the father of everybody metaphorically he is the creator sustainer evolver cherisher of everybody he is the father of everybody but physically he does not beget because begetting is an animal act it belongs to the lower animal functions of sex and we were not to attribute such a quality to God that God begot a son though the Christians keep on repeating the words son of God, son of God, son of God so he said what about Adam? he said how many sons has he got? the bulk of Christendom will tell you one I said you're not reading your Bible you don't read your Bible properly you know God has got sons by the tons in the Bible by the tons, you know tons the old measurement of weighing things tons Genesis chapter 6 verse 3 it says and the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them to wife all that they chose and when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men and bore children to them they became great men of old, old men of renown in the book of Exodus God says Israel is my son even my firstborn in the book of Jer Jeremiah says Ephraim is my son even my firstborn in the New Testament we are told as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God every Tom, Dick and Harry if you follow the will and plan of God you are a godly person in the language of the Jew in the idiom of the Jew he says son of God meaning a righteous person but the Christian says no 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 Jesus is not like that he's begotten not made so I'm asking please explain to me I'm asking the English speaking people please explain to me 
what are you trying to emphasize? When you tell me he is begotten, not made. You see, the context is verse, starting from verse 23. It says, Jesus walked in Solomon's porch in the temple of Jerusalem. Then came the Jews around about him, means they surrounded him, and said, How long does that make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. They are alleging that he's talking ambiguously. He's not putting forth his claim clear enough. That's a charge, a false charge. Because we know he didn't speak ambiguously. He put forth his claim that he is the Christ, he is the Messiah. But the Jews want to pick up a fight. They didn't like his preaching. Him calling them, you generation of wipers, you whited sepulchres, you wicked and adulterous generation, you fools, you snakes. Would you like to hear people addressing you like that? And the Jews were not a people to forget in a hurry. So they find the man alone, they surround him, brandishing finger in his face. Come on, tell us. Why don't you tell us? They want to pick up a fight with him so they can work themselves into a frenzy and give him a good bashing. Get their own back. So Jesus says, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. He said, my father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. 28, verse 28. Verse 29, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 30, I and my father are one. In this, to see that once the man has accepted faith, he remains in faith. I as a teacher cease to see to that, as well as God Almighty sees to that. In purpose we are one. But the Jews were looking for trouble. And if you're looking for trouble, you, you don't have to go very far. You get it around the corner. So they picked up stones again to stone him. So Jesus says, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? So they say, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Kufa. Because that thou being a man, make us thyself a God. You are a man, you're claiming to be God. There's another false charge. First false charge was that he was talking ambiguously. Now another false charge that you're claiming to be God. That's the Jews alleged. The Christian agreed with the Jews. They said he did make such a claim, but he was entitled to it. Let us hear what Jesus says. The Jews say he blasphemed. The Christians say he did, but it is no blasphemy because he was entitled to. What does Jesus say? He says, is it not written in your law? Verse 31. Is it, verse 32. Is it not written in your law? Law means the Torah. I said, ye are gods. Ye, you, are gods. If he, God Almighty, called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, I mean the prophets are called gods in our language, man. The prophets. God Almighty speaks to Moses and he says, Behold, I have made you a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. In the book of Psalms, 82nd Psalm, verse 6, it says, Ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. That's the genius of the Jewish language. That when a person is called God, he is not God. Like in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the Bible says, And the devil is the god of this world. Is he God? The devil, shaitan. No. This is your language. This means he's in control. So you say he's God. Moses is God to Pharaoh. And you Jews are all gods. That is the genius of the Jewish language. Now, you can't say, come for divinity on that. He said, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods, and the scripture cannot be broken, means you can't contradict me. Say ye of him whom the Father had sanctified and sent into the world that thou blasphemest, because I said I'm the Son of God, which is nothing, man. God has got sons by the tons in our community, in our language. Why are you trying to find fault with me when I'm only saying I'm the Son of God, when others are called gods? The verse statement Brother Shorosh referred to from my book, what is his name? I took the trouble to give him all my books. All the ammunition I have, I send it to him. He asked for it, I send everything. All that I had written. Everything, all the facts are given in black and white. I said, now you can work from this. It's easier to answer. Once you have it in black and white before you, you know my arguments beforehand. 
I was not afraid. Because I know none of these arguments can really be, intellectually can be contradicted. Listen. God Almighty says, in the Quran now, another test is given. Most certainly Messiah, Jesus the son of Mary, is no more than an apostle. Kad khalat min qablihi rusul, many were the messengers that passed away before him. Wa ummuhu siddiqa, and his mother was a virtuous woman, a saintly woman. Kana yakulani ta'am, and they both had food. So, what's exceptional about that? We all eat food, don't we? No, this is in reference to the idea that they are gods or supernatural. The Roman Catholics call Mary the mother of God. Mary is the mother of God. Jesus is the son of God. And as God, as our brother Shorosh, as well as many Christians believe that he is God in human form. He is God incarnate. So, if they are such godly people, then they both had food. So if they had food, that means they had a call of nature. If you eat, you must look for the toilet sooner or later. Or look for the bush or the rocks. It can't be helped. God Almighty doesn't tell you in those words. But listen to what he says. Unzur. Kaifa nubayinu lahum ulayati. He says, see how we make our signs clear to you. That they both had food. The implications of eating food. Unzur. See. How we make our signs clear to you. Summanzur. Have another look. Look. Have another look. How they have deviated from the path. Gone away from the true path. Attributing to God an animal nature. That he is like a man. We are made in his image. What image? This image? This is the monkey image. We are all glorified monkeys. Some look like chimpanzees. Some like baboons. Some like something else. You know, gorillas. All of us. We are all glorified monkeys. Is that the image God is talking about? <laughs> and the Christian says yes. Christian says yes. I said God said in the book of Genesis, quoted by Dr. Shorosh, he said, and God said, let there be light. I said, did he say that with his mouth? He said yes. Did he utter the words? He said yes. So God has got a mouth? He said yes. So if he's got a mouth, he must have teeth as well. Teeth, teeth. Can you imagine a toothless God, a God without teeth? Can you imagine a God like that? So he says, no, he must have teeth. Yes, he's got teeth. Then I say, he's got a tongue. He said, he's got a tongue. Then he must have a larynx and the lungs. He said, yes. Then he's going to talk, 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 you know, the light, sun, moon, stars, millions of creation. He's talking, 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 his mouth goes dry. So he must need liquid to lubricate. If this type of mouth he has, he must need some lubrication, no? He said, yes. So once that lubrication goes in, there must be an outlet as well, no? Can you imagine? What are you bringing God down to? An anthropomorphic conception. God is like a man. Then talking about plural. God said, he says, Elohim, Im. The first chapter of Genesis, chapter, verse 3 also. Elohim, in Hebrew, Elohim, the God. I said, you know, Elohim is a plural. Yes. My Arab brother says, yes, it's plural. There are two types of plurals in Hebrew and Arabic, which he confirmed, and dual as well. Singular, plural, and dual. Singular, dual, and plural. Yes, Arabic as well as Hebrew. But in, in every Bible, there are a hundred different versions. The word is Elohim, gods. I haven't seen a single Bible yet which says, gods said, let there be light. It should be gods, not God. It's Elohim. It says, what is this Im? Ask the Jew, ask the Arab. But if it doesn't suit us, we ignore. Im is a plural of respect in Hebrew. In Arabic, we have two types of plurals, same like Hebrew. When Allah says in the Quran, Inna nahna zalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. It is we who have sent down the revelation and it is for us to protect it. Ask any Muslim, the most simplest of us, how many gods are there? He says one. Then who is this us? Who is this we? 
Ask the Arab. No Arab in 1400 years has pointed a finger at the Muslims telling them that you are worshipping more than one God. When the Quran says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, say he's Allah the one and only, then no Arab questions the Muslim to say, look, who is this we? Who is this us? Why don't you ask us? Why don't you ask your Arab brethren? Who is this we? Who are this us? He says, don't you know? You speak Arabic, Arabic is your language, you know we have two types of plurals, plural of numbers and plural of respect. This is plural of respect in our language. You see, the context is verse, starting from verse 23. It says, Jesus walked in Solomon's porch in the temple of Jerusalem. Then came the Jews around about him, means they surrounded him, and said, How long does that make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. They are alleging that he's talking ambiguously. He's not putting forth his claim clear enough. That's a charge, a false charge. Because we know he didn't speak ambiguously. He put forth his claim that he is the Christ, he is the Messiah. But the Jews want to pick up a fight. They didn't like his preaching. Him calling them, you generation of wipers, you whited sepulchres, you wicked and adulterous generation, you fools, you snakes. Would you like to hear people addressing you like that? And the Jews were not a people to forget in a hurry. So they find the man alone, they surround him, brandishing finger in his face. Come on, tell us. Why don't you tell us? They want to pick up a fight with him so they can work themselves into a frenzy and give him a good bashing. Get their own back. So Jesus says, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. He said, my father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. 28, verse 28, verse 29, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 30, I and my father are one. In this, to see that once the man has accepted faith, he remains in faith. I as a teacher cease to see to that, as well as God Almighty sees to that. In purpose, we are one. But the Jews were looking for trouble. And if you're looking for trouble, you, you don't have to go very far. You get it around the corner. So, they picked up stones again to stone him. So Jesus says, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? So they say, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Kufa. Because that thou being a man, make us thyself a God. You are a man, you're claiming to be God. There's another false charge. First false charge was that he was talking ambiguously. Now another false charge that you're claiming to be God. That's the Jews alleged. The Christian agreed with the Jews. They said he did make such a claim, but he was entitled to it. Let us hear what Jesus says. The Jews say he blasphemed. The Christians say he did, but it is no blasphemy because he was entitled to. What does Jesus say? He says, is it not written in your law? Verse 31. Is it, verse 32, is it not written in your law? Law means the Torah. I said ye are gods. Ye, you, are gods. If he, God Almighty, called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, I mean the prophets are called gods in our language, man. The prophets. God Almighty speaks to Moses and he says, Behold, I have made you a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. In the book of Psalms, 82nd Psalm, verse 6, it says, Ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. That's the genius of the Jewish language. That when a person is called God, he is not God. Like in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the Bible says, And the devil is the god of this world. Is he God? The devil, shaitan. No. This is your language. This means he's in control. So you say he's God. Moses is God to Pharaoh. And you Jews are all gods. That is the genius of the Jewish language. Now, you can't say, come for divinity on that. He said, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods, and the scripture cannot be broken, means you can't contradict me. See ye of him whom the Father had sanctified and sent into the world, that thou blasphemest, because I said, I'm the Son of God, which is nothing, man. God has got sons by the tons in our community, in our language. Why are you trying to find fault with me when I'm only saying I'm the Son of God, when others are called gods?
the verse statement Brother Shorosh is referred to from my book, what is his name? I took the trouble to give him all my books. All the ammunition I have, I send it to him. He asked for it, I send everything. All that I had written. Everything, all the facts are given in black and white. I said, now you can work from this. It's easier to answer. Once you have it in black and white before you, you know my arguments beforehand. I was not afraid. Because I know none of these arguments can really be, intellectually can be contradicted. Listen. God Almighty says, in the Quran now, another test is given. Most certainly Messiah, Jesus the son of Mary, is no more than an apostle. Many were the messengers that passed away before him. And his mother was a virtuous woman, a saintly woman. And they both had food. So, what's exceptional about that? We all eat food, don't we? No, this is in reference to the idea that they are gods or supernatural. The Roman Catholics call Mary the mother of God. Mary is the mother of God. Jesus is the son of God. And as God, as our brother Shorosh, as well as many Christians believe that he is God in human form, he is God incarnate. So, if they are such godly people, then they both had food. So if they had food, that means they had a call of nature. If you eat, you must look for the toilet sooner or later. Or look for the bush or the rocks. It can't be helped. God Almighty doesn't tell you in those words, but listen to what he says. Unzur. He says, see how we make our signs clear to you that they both had food. The implications of eating food. Unzur. See how we make our signs clear to you. Summanzur. Have another look. Look. Have another look. How they have deviated from the path gone away from the true path, attributing to God an animal nature, that he is like a man, we are made in his image. What image? This image? This is the monkey image. We are all glorified monkeys. Some look like chimpanzees, some like baboons, some like something else, you know, gorillas, all of us. We are all glorified monkeys. Is that the image God is talking about? <laughs> and the Christian says yes. Christian says yes. I said, God said in the book of Genesis, quoted by Dr. Shorosh, he said, and God said, let there be light. I said, did he say that with his mouth? He said, yes. Did he utter the words? He said, yes. So God has got a mouth? He said, yes. So if he's got a mouth, he must have teeth as well. Teeth, teeth. Can you imagine a toothless God, a God with a teeth? <laughs> Can you imagine a God like that? So he says, no, he must have teeth. Yes, he's got teeth. Then I said, he's got a tongue. He said, he's got a tongue. Then he must have a larynx and the lungs. He said, yes. Then he's going to talk, talk, talk. The light, sun, moon, stars, millions of creation. He's talking, 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 talking. His mouth goes dry. So he must need liquid to lubricate. If this type of mouth he has, he must need some lubrication. No? He said, yes. So once that lubrication goes in, there must be an outlet as well. No? Can you imagine? What are you bringing God down to? An anthropomorphic conception. God is like a man. Then talking about plural. God said, he says, Elohim. Im. The first chapter of Genesis, chapter, verse 3 also. Elohim in Hebrew, Elohim, the God. I said, you know, Elohim is a plural. Yes. My Arab brother says, yes, it's plural. There are two types of plurals in Hebrew and Arabic, which he confirmed, and dual as well. Singular, plural, and dual. Singular, dual, and plural. Yes, Arabic as well as Hebrew. But in, in every Bible, there are a hundred different versions. The word is Elohim, gods. I haven't seen a single Bible yet which says, gods said, let there be light. It should be God's, not God. It's Elohim. It says, what is this Im? Ask the Jew. Ask the Arab. But if it doesn't suit us, we ignore. Im is a plural of respect in Hebrew. 
In Arabic, we have two types of plurals, same like Hebrew. When Allah says in the Quran, Inna nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. It is we who have sent down the revelation and it is for us to protect it. Ask any Muslim, the most simplest of us, how many gods are there? He says one. Then who is this us? Who is this we? Ask the Arab. No Arab in 1400 years has pointed a finger at the Muslims telling them that you are worshipping more than one God. When the Quran says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, say he is Allah the one and only, then no Arab questions the Muslim to say, look, who is this we? Who is this us? Why don't you ask us? Why don't you ask your Arab brethren? Who is this we? Who are this us? He says, don't you know? You speak Arabic, Arabic is your language, you know we have two types of plurals, Plural of numbers and plural of respect. This is plural of respect in our language. You see, the context is verse, starting from verse 23. It says, Jesus walked in Solomon's porch in the temple of Jerusalem. Then came the Jews around about him, means they surrounded him, and said, How long does that make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. They are alleging that he's talking ambiguously. He's not putting forth his claim clear enough. That's a charge, a false charge. Because we know he didn't speak ambiguously. He put forth his claim that he is the Christ, he is the Messiah. But the Jews want to pick up a fight. They didn't like his preaching. Him calling them, you generation of wipers, you whited sepulchres, you wicked and adulterous generation, you fools, you snakes. Would you like to hear people addressing you like that? And the Jews were not a people to forget in a hurry. So, they find the man alone, they surround him, brandishing finger in his face. Come on, tell us. Why don't you tell us? They want to pick up a fight with him, so they can work themselves into a frenzy and give him a good bashing. Get their own back. So Jesus says, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. He said, my father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. 28, verse 28. Verse 29, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 30, I and my father are one. In this, to see that once the man has accepted faith, he remains in faith. I as a teacher cease to see to that, as well as God Almighty sees to that. In purpose we are one. But the Jews were looking for trouble. And if you're looking for trouble, you, you don't have to go very far. You get it around the corner. So they picked up stones again to stone him. So Jesus says, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? So they say, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Kufa. Because that thou being a man makest thyself a god. You are a man, you're claiming to be God. There's another false charge. First false charge was that he was talking ambiguously. Now another false charge that you're claiming to be God. That's the Jews alleged. The Christian agreed with the Jews. They said he did make such a claim, but he was entitled to it. Let us hear what Jesus says. The Jews say he blasphemed. The Christians say he did, but it is no blasphemy because he was entitled to. What does Jesus say? He says, is it not written in your law? Verse 31. Is it, verse 32. Is it not written in your law? Law means the Torah. I said, ye are gods. Ye, you, are gods. If he, God Almighty, called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, I mean the prophets are called gods in our language, man. The prophets. God Almighty speaks to Moses and he says, Behold, I have made you a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. In the book of Psalms, 82nd Psalm, verse 6, it says, Ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. That's the genius of the Jewish language. That when a person is called God, he is not God. Like in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the Bible says, And the devil is the god of this world. Is he God? The devil, shaitan. No. This is your language. This means he's in control. So you say he's God. Moses is God to Pharaoh. And you Jews are all gods. That is the genius of the Jewish language. 
Now, you can't say, come for divinity on that? I said, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods, and the scripture cannot be broken, means you can't contradict me. See ye of him whom the Father had sanctified and sent into the world, that thou blasphemest? Because I said, I'm the son of God, which is nothing, man. God has got sons by the tons in our community, in our language. Why are you trying to find fault with me when I'm only saying I'm the son of God? When others are called gods. The verse statement Brother Shoroshi referred to from my book, what is his name? I took the trouble to give him all my books. All the ammunition I have, I send it to him. He asked for it, I send everything. All that I had written. Everything, all the facts are given in black and white. I said, now you can work from this. It's easier to answer. Once you have it in black and white before you, you know my arguments beforehand. I was not afraid. Because I know none of these arguments can really be, intellectually can be contradicted. Listen. God Almighty says, in the Quran now, another test is given. Says, Most certainly Messiah, Jesus the son of Mary, is no more than an apostle. Many were the messengers that passed away before him. And his mother was a virtuous woman, a saintly woman. Kana Yakulani Tam and they both at food. So what's exceptional about that? We all eat food, don't we? No. This is in reference to the idea that they are gods or supernatural. The Roman Catholics call Mary the mother of God. Mary is the mother of God. Jesus is the son of God. And as God, as our brother Shorosh, as well as many Christians believe that he is God in human form, he is God incarnate. So, if they are such godly people, then they both add food. So if they add food, that means they had a call of nature. If you eat, you must look for the toilet sooner or later, or look for the bush or the rocks. It can't be helped. God Almighty doesn't tell you in those words, but listen to what he says. Unzur. says, see how we make our signs clear to you that they both had food. The implications of eating food. Unzur. See how we make our signs clear to you. Summanzur. Have another look. Look. Have another look. How they have deviated from the path gone away from the true path, attributing to God an animal nature, that he is like a man, we are made in his image. What image? This image? This is the monkey image. We are all glorified monkeys. Some look like chimpanzees, some like baboons, some like something else, you know, gorillas, all of us. We are all glorified monkeys. Is that the image God is talking about? <laughs> and the Christian says yes. Christian says yes. I said, God said in the book of Genesis, quoted by Dr. Shorosh, he said, and God said, let there be light. I said, did he say that with his mouth? He said, yes. Did he utter the words? He said, yes. So God has got a mouth? He said, yes. So if he's got a mouth, he must have teeth as well. Teeth, teeth. Can you imagine a toothless God, a God with a teeth? <laughs> Can you imagine a God like that? So he says, no, he must have teeth. Yes, he's got teeth. Then I said, he's got a tongue. He said, he's got a tongue. Then he must have a larynx and the lungs. He said, yes. Then he's going to talk, 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 you know, the light, sun, moon, stars, millions of creation. He's talking, 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 talking. His mouth goes dry. So he must need liquid to lubricate. If this type of mouth he has, he must need some lubrication, no? He said, yes. So once that lubrication goes in, there must be an outlet as well, no? Can you imagine? What are you bringing God down to? An anthropomorphic conception. God is like a man. Then talking about plural. God said, this is Elohim. Im. The first chapter of Genesis. Chapter, verse 3 also. Elohim in Hebrew. Elohim. The God. I said, you know, Elohim is a plural. Yes. My Arab brother says, yes, it's plural. There are two types of plurals in Hebrew and Arabic, which he confirmed, and dual as well. Singular, plural, and dual. 
singular, dual and plural. Yes, Arabic as well as Hebrew. But in, in every Bible, there are a hundred different versions. The word is Elohim, God's. I haven't seen a single Bible yet which says God's said, let there be light. It should be God's, not God. It's Elohim. It says, what is this Im? Ask the Jew, ask the Arab. But if it doesn't suit us, we ignore. Im is a plural of respect in Hebrew. In Arabic, we have two types of plurals, same like Hebrew. When Allah says in the Quran, Inna nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. It is we who have sent down the revelation and it is for us to protect it. Ask any Muslim, the most simplest of us, how many gods are there? He says one. Then who is this us? Who is this we? Ask the Arab. No Arab in 1400 years has pointed a finger at the Muslims telling them that you are worshipping more than one God. When the Quran says, Pull who Allah ahad, say he is Allah the one and only, then no Arab questions the Muslim to say, Look, who is this we? Who is this us? Why don't you ask us? Why don't you ask your Arab brethren? Who is this we? Who are this us? He says, Don't you know? You speak Arabic, Arabic is your language, you know we have two types of plurals. Plural of numbers and plural of respect. This is plural of respect in our language. No, the human mind it repels the idea that this puny little creature, which made his mother impure for 40 days, that's what the Bible says, she had to be purified after 40 days. What made her impure? The birth of a holy God making her impure? No, it's a human child, like you and me. It made Mary impure for 40 days. This is she carried him for nine months. The Anglicans in England today, they are a little more reasonable than the evangelists. There was a shock survey of Anglican bishops in June last year, here in, in the UK. And more than half of England's bishops say Christians are not obliged to believe that Jesus Christ was God. No more. You don't have to believe. If your salvation and mine depended upon that, because your salvation, if you are a Christian, the Christian believes that Jesus must die as a God. Because one man can't carry the sins of the world. If he died on the cross, we say they didn't kill him and they didn't crucify him. We prove the point in July here. We will not go into that. But the Christian must believe that Jesus must die as a God and not as a man. Because one man can't carry the sins of the world. So God died? You're asking. You believe that God died? You say he's eternally mortal and he died. So once he dies, what happens to his creation? You know the power, power. Where it's coming from, this power that's coming into this hall here. The, substation or the head station. If they switch it off there, what can you do with all your switches? Finish, you're gone. It's, you are in darkness. If God Almighty, if His light is extinguished, who runs this universe? Who kept it going? For three days and three nights, He was away in the tomb as the Christians. The dead. For three days and three nights. For three days and three nights, who was controlling the universe? Who? No. No. I say, Jesus Christ never claimed at any time, I am God or worship me. On the contrary, he said, my father is greater than I. He said, my father is greater than all. John chapter 20 verse 29. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. John chapter 5 verse 30. He said, I can do nothing. God can do everything, anything. Ah, except. Our brother Shorosh was saying that God can become a man. He can do anything. I said, no, he can't do anything. Am, am I limiting God? I says, no. I am telling you and I challenge people to prove to me that God Almighty, he can create another God. He is uncreated. He can create another uncreated. He is eternal from the beginning which has no beginning 
Now he can create another equal to him. Where? How? As soon as he creates somebody, he's created. That means he can't create an uncreated. Look, this is common sense. He can't create another God. Can he make another father? There will be two fathers, then he can make a dozen fathers, can't he? So my Hindu cousins are more consistent. They believe in millions of God. Anything is God. Everything is God. He's more consistent. He's more reasonable. Why are you so unreasonable? You only make one exception. Why shouldn't we have more gods, more sons, physical sons? No, he says, ha. Ah. And further, he can't throw me out of his kingdom. This God Almighty. Can he throw you out of his kingdom, out of his dominion? Is there a place outside his dominion where he can throw you out? Can he? He can't. Can you imagine him throwing you out? Where, where, where can he throw you out? Ha! Huh? He can obliterate you, yes. He can finish you up, yes. But he can't throw you out of his dominion, out of his rule. He can't. Now that doesn't mean he's limited. This is how powerful he is. His dominion extends over the heavens and the earth. Everywhere, whatever you can think or imagine and beyond. So where can he throw you? See, God Almighty does. He can do anything, but what he does are godly things. God must do godly things. He doesn't do monkey tricks. Look, I don't expect Brother Shorosh to do monkey tricks, nor do you expect me to do monkey tricks here. Do you? A man comes so many thousand miles away from Africa. Another brother comes so many thousand miles from America to do monkey tricks here. What do you expect us to do? If somebody told you that, you know, d that and the Shorosh, you know, <laughs> we're having the dance in front of the stage. Would you believe it? Would people believe you? So we don't expect these people, these godly people to come along and do, you know, jiving here. No. God Almighty, he does godly things. He doesn't do ungodly things. He says further, Jesus, he said, I, with the finger of God, cast out devils. Luke chapter 11, verse 20. He says, I cast out devils by the Spirit of God. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. He says, the power, the power we are talking about. He had power to do this and power to do He had power to forgive sins. We dedicate it. Ask him. He says, all power is given unto me. It's not mine. It's given to me by who? By the Father in heaven. God Almighty gave him the power. A general power of attorney. What do you want? I give it to you. And he gave him that power to heal the blind, the lepers, and quicken the dead, and kill those 2,000 pigs, according to the Bible, and drying up the fig tree from its very roots, and stilling the storm. Who, where did he get the power from? From God. So glory to God. And somebody rightly remarked in the New Testament, when he performed a miracle, he said, glory to God for giving such powers unto men. This is it. Glory goes to God for giving such powers unto men, not to the man, to God. Jesus says, my brother says in the Quran, it is said that he knew, he knows the time of the coming of the hour of judgment. I think he has misread the Quran. The Quran is here, he can check it up. I would like to see where he says he knows, or God says he knows. The Bible contradicts that, the Holy Bible. It says, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels nor neither the Son, but the Father in heaven. In other words, in my knowledge, I'm not like God. In my power, I'm not like God. Mark chapter 13, verse 32. The big question remains, where does he say I'm God? Or where he says worship me? Or where does he say that I and God Almighty are one and the same thing? Is there a single Christian who can give me a verse? that me and God Almighty are one and the same thing. Is there a Christian in this vast audience who can give me? John 14. No, what does it say, John 14? What does it say? That I am... I am the Father of work. Right. Yes. John, no. I, the reference is incorrect. 14.6. No, the reference is not 14.6. The reference is, is, the quotation is right. I and my father are one. 
The quotation is correct. But it is John chapter 10 verse 30. Please, please, silence, please. The reference is John chapter 10 verse 30. Now, you know, if I ask, you will have the chance to ask questions, my dear brothers. Please sit down. Let me, let me. Would you please sit down? I'm sorry, we're going to take questions later. We're not having interruptions now. Please, would you sit down now? Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Bidat. Yes, Stewards. I am. Shh, 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 shh. Silence, please. I am. I am reading from my head, and my brother Shorosh just confirmed it that it is John chapter 10 verse 30. Now the context. You see, in 40 years, for 40 years, I have been talking to people, and. When this verse is quoted, that, that Jesus said, I and my Father are one. The verse is there in the Bible. You can't contradict that. I'm asking, what is the context? And believe me, in 40 years, I have not come across a single learned man of Christendom, a single man in 40 years, who could give me the context. Yeah, you can open the book, yes by opening the book but no man in my life 40 years now no Christian with the name could give me the context you, ha you have to open the book without opening the book you'll never be able to give you the context now let me give you the context what are you really trying to tell me and believe me no Christian in 40 years has been able, able to open his mouth to tell me what it means it had to be an American, not Brother Sharosh. It had to be an American. He said, it means sired by God. I said, what? He said, no, no, no. You ask me what it means. I'm only telling you what it means, not that I believe that God sired a son. So, he says, Jesus Christ. I don't know. This to the Muslim is a blasphemy to say that Jesus is God. But there is another blasphemy from the Christian point of view. You see, the Christian, the Orthodox Christians, the, the Anglican Christians, the Methodists, and all the Roman Catholics, they all believe in the Holy Trinity, and they say that Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. You never hear the word is in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You'll never hear in the name of the Holy Ghost, and the Son, and the Father. Never. You'll never hear in the name of the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the Father. It must ever be in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He is always the second person of the Trinity. If anybody in Christendom says that Jesus is the Father, it is a heresy in the Christian church. From the Muslim point of view, attributing divinity to any created being is blasphemy, kufr. But from the Christian point of view, from the church's point of view, Anglican, Methodist, Lutheran and all, if anybody says, has the temerity to say that Jesus is the Father, it is an ancient heresy which was condemned and extirpated by the Roman Catholic Church over a thousand years ago. They got rid of it. Where you say, and our brother Shorosh, my brother Shorosh, I don't know why he hid that fact that he actually believes that Jesus is the Father in his book. The liberated Christian. In case he has forgotten it, he might not have brought it along, I brought it along with me. The liberated Christian. Palestinian. Uh, the liberated Palestine, I beg your pardon. With the Star of David in the background, I don't know, liberated from the Jews or liberated from what? Liberated Christian. He says, I'm quoting from page 80. It's a most loving heavenly father. I thank you for the miracles you have done in my life. The greatest miracle, miracle of all was that you love me enough 
to die for me who the father died for him and this is in church history as master of divinity brother shorosh will be able to confirm is an ancient heresy which is called patri pessimism or monarchianism or sibilianism you don't have to worry about this two yard long terms but this is in church history it had been extirpated some thousand years ago but is he is the father but jesus contradicts this statement he says call no man your father on earth for there is only one who is your father which art in heaven matthew chapter 23 verse 9 and jesus is a man on earth walking this earth which peter testifies in the book of acts chapter 2 verse 22 he says ye men of israel hear these words jesus of nazareth a man approved of god among you amen by miracles and wonders and signs which god did by him he didn't do it god did by him he was using jesus god almighty was using jesus which god did by him in the midst of you which you yourself also know so he is not the father he says to the jews ye have neither heard his voice the voice of god at any time you have not heard the voice of god any time nor seen his shape or form at any time the jews were seeing jesus and they're listening to him they didn't hearken to the message but they were listening to him they were not deaf all the jews they were reacting to his message they were listening they were hearing and they were seeing and they wanted to stone him and he used to get out of the way he used to run away he used to hide they were seeing his form and he used to disappear not into thin air but hiding away running away according to the bible so he could not be the father and he could not be that god the bible gives us a test what what god is not what god is not like in islam in the quran also we are given what god is not laysa kan mislihi shay that god is not like anything you can think or imagine anything you think or imagine is not him we are given some 99 attributes of god that is kind is merciful he is just is holy and on and on 99 but there are certain things that he is not this he is not that he is not that the bible also gives us what god is not it says in the book of job chapter 25 verse 4 to 6 said how then can man be justified with god how can you compare any human being with god how can he be clean that is born of a woman anyone that is born of a woman is not good enough to be compared with god anyone whether it is a moses or a jesus or a muhammad whether it is a rama or a krishna or a buddha Anyone that a woman carries for nine months can never be your God. That's what the Bible says. When even the moon is not bright and the stars are impure in His sight, in the sight of God, what is all this? This moon, the stars, what is it? Nothing. How much less is man? You see, the Christians are thinking that look, Jesus is born of a woman, no doubt, but he was born miraculously, which we agree. So that makes him something supernatural because he was born miraculously. So God Almighty in this book the Christian Bible he says how much less is man if the sun and the moon and the stars are nothing in his sight what is man you and I what are you what are we how much less is man who is but a maggot you know what's a maggot you people living in concrete jungles you don't know what maggot is you know maggot i won't discuss you better look at the dictionary oxford dictionary will tell you maggot those worms you know that goes on manure human dung maggots you and i according to this book of god you are nothing more than a maggot and the son of man who jesus christ 
explicit statement. In case you have something at the back of your mind that Jesus is an exception, God Almighty goes out of his way to tell you, look, this Jesus of mine is no exception. And the Son of Man, ask any Christian who is the Son of Man. 83 times in the New Testament, Jesus Christ is described as the Son of Man. Son of Man, Son of Man. This is the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hasn't got a place to rest his head. And the Son of Man, a sign of Jonah, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the earth, so shall the Son of Man 83 times. 13 times his address as the Son of God. 13 times. But 83 times, 70 more times, son of man, son of man, son of man, and ask any Christian missionary, who is the son of man? He said, Jesus. Amen. So God almost and the son of man, who is only a worm. Worm. He's a worm. We are maggots. A worse degree than a worm. He is a worm. In other words, don't make a mistake. Anyone that is born of a woman, and the Bible tells us in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 21, when he was eight days old, he was circumcised. God getting circumcised? Please, please, we must heed the advice given at the beginning that there should be no clapping for this. At the end of a talk, if you give an applause, accept it for both parties, please. Thank you. Okay. When he was eight days old, he was circumcised and named Jesus by the angel when he was in his mother's womb. Who was in his mother's womb? Jesus. How did he come out from there? Like you and me. Who oh God. I'm asking if you were a nurse, you can imagine any situation. If you were a nurse 2,000 years ago in the stable, helping Mary when she's delivering the child, can you for one moment think that that helpless little creature with all the filth and the muck, your God, your Jehovah, your Allah, Astaghfirullah.